is such a nervous. Yeah. We talked to Angus Young down in Australia recently and asked him to explain, please. We were uh, probably a band that's best seen in a live situation. You know? And uh, that's how the title came about. It was. It's not to be taken like go out and blow up your video. It was, right. It's more... Uh, how do you say, uh, instead, because everything's automatic these days. A kid can flick on the button on the TV and he's got a you know, remote control. He, you can zoom through everything and get it coming in from all over the world. You know, you can turn on your radio and get rock coming in from America, you know. So for us, for us the best thing yeah, as a band, it was always, we were great on stage, you know. And that was just what it was. And seeing as we were doing a lot of touring this year, we thought, be a great title, you know, just to sort of give people the idea, or, uh, you know, more or less to get off your seat and get out and see it live. Well, that's it for the metal detector. Now you should all just kick back and relax as we have more. I bet you can. To the stage, it's like so big oh, to, to run from one end to the other is going to be yeah, like well, doing a hundred yard dash. Like, you know, you know. Call a taxi. <laughs> we we, we were at my house, house the other day looking at the model, and I asked, "How long is the stage? About from here to my house?" And he said, and the Dave went, "No, about twice as much." And I'm going, "What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be I'm like talking about you running a hundred yard dash, man, just to get to the other side." <laughs> That's pretty big. Well, the Scorpions' new album, Savage Amusement, is due for release in just three weeks. Before they join the Monsters of Rock tour, the Scorps will be the first Western hard rock band to tour the Soviet Union. But it isn't the first time they've penetrated the Iron Curtain. Well, we played in Budapest about one and a half years ago, and uh, it was the first experience we had with the East. And we figured uh, already then we, we could feel that people from the East really liked this. We had about 10,000 people from East Germany coming down to Budapest to see the band. And the promoter from Budapest is also going to be the promoter in Russia. So by that time, the thing, the idea came together to go to the East and our agent in London, John Jackson, got together with the promoter in Budapest and they got it together. We also heard rumors that <laughs> Gorbachev's uh, son uh, is a big Scorpion fan. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so we heard. Oh, yeah, really, it's true. The U.S. tour May 31st with Guns N' Roses on the bill. And Cat is the self-proclaimed goddess of speed metal. Judge for yourselves. Speed metal's fastest female guitarist or what? But it wasn't always like that because Cat used to be a classical violin virtuoso. As she played violin for six years and graduated with awards from the prestigious Juilliard School of Music. A cat ditched the violin for speed guitar after hearing Rob Halford of Judas Priest sounding like, and here's a quote, Wagnerian opera singer. Can you believe that? End of the quote, by the way. Her Worship Me or Die album is out on Road Racer Records. And besides electric guitar, Cat plays a frenzied electric violin solo on a track called Demon. Now, if you want to worship Cat, join her feline fan club. It's the Adam Curry with you, bringing you the Metal Detector. Now, one of the groundbreaking thrash bands in recent years, Stormtroopers of Death, reunited recently at Megaforce Records' fifth anniversary party. The reunion pulled SOD members Scott Ian and Charlie Benante from Anthrax, Danny Lilker from Nuclear Assault, and current MOD vocalist Billy Milano. MOD has an EP out called Surfin' MOD, which features a cover of the Beach Boys' Surfin' USA. Now, we spoke to Billy backstage and asked him how the Surfin' EP came about. The EP we did as a fun because summer was coming up and we wanted to get in the studio with the other members, the John the bass player, Bruce Vitek on guitar, and uh, Tim Mallory on drums. We wanted to get in the studio and, and work out the bugs before we go in and record our, our amazing new album. This is an amazing album. Also, he's a very big and Ed Funicello fan. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> yes, you are. Anthrax's new album is called State of Euphoria. It includes a song called Don't Make Me Laugh about fallen televangelist Jimmy Swaggart and Schism, a song about racial tension. Anthrax gives new meaning to the word heavy metal because of the hard issues they confront in their lyrics. But the band told us they're not always so serious. We are. Uh, we can't speak for everybody else, but we take what we do seriously and... Um we, uh, we feel really, you know, not motivated to writing about this type of thing. It's just, can, we read the paper and it's reality. Day-to-day -day thing. I mean, that's yeah, that's all we care about. But that's, that's on album, on in stage, it's totally different. We, we've been saying it for years, we'll, we'll have, as we've been doing this, you know, it's two different stories. You know, it's on the album, why we just have a good time. And next hour, the metal detector tells all you aspiring rock gods how to break into heavy metal without getting screwed. Until then, take some musical pointers from this band, Cinderella.
Adam Curry here bringing you the Metal Detector. Now, for all of you metalheads who want to go all the way with your music careers, there's a new home video that tells you how not to get screwed. It's called How to Break into Heavy, heavy Metal, and it covers everything from starting a band to signing a record contract. It also features advice from members of White Lion, Anthrax, and L.A. Guns. And for more information, you can write to Integrated Video Marketing, 1501 Broadway, Suite 2307, New York, New York, 10036. And one band who has just broken into the music business is DeMaul. They look like a cross between Poison and the New York Dolls, and they're dead set on making it big. I mean real big. They've even gone so far as to dress up in women's clothing for their first gig. But the malls say they aren't copying the dolls. They've just dropped the transvest transvestite gag, and their music combines the sounds of Hanoi Rocks and White Lion. The band's name is actually an acronym. The mall stands for Documentary Musicals of Life's Little Stresses. I guess you know why they shortened it now. Right here is a man who was never heavy into the makeup or glitter. His mind has always been on medieval castles, dragons, spiders, Ronnie James Dio. band Voivod started telling the story of an evolutionary nuclear warrior. But the sci-fi fantasy came closer to reality than the band ever expected. Like Warrior Voivod, the band has survived incredible odds. Last summer, the band released their most critically acclaimed album, Dimension Hytros. But when their guitarist Piggy was diagnosed with brain cancer, they had to cancel their tour. Piggy under underwent a delicate operation and has survived with a complete recovery. Diagnosis? He will thrash on. Voivod are back on the road in full force with violent support. Them. Right now, let's take a look at the dates for these shows. But the master of the macabre is already releasing some more vinyl. The EP is called Dark Sides and contains an array of previously unreleased but hard to find King Diamond recordings. Some of the tracks are the ultimate Fright Night Anthem Halloween, probably the rarest King Diamond recording, The Lake. It was previously only available on a 1986 limited edition picture disc. And just in time for the holidays, No Presents for Christmas, the first song from King Diamond after the demise of his band Merciful Fate. Now, King Diamond isn't the only one ruffling people's feathers. In January, Overkill will release the CD version of their infamous UEP. The EP is currently available only on vinyl and cassette. Uh, tonight, Overkill will finish the, their U.S. And the band is back on the road supporting their album Dimension High Trost, and it looks like we'll have a new album from them by spring. So let's take a look at the continuing story of Voivod's evolution in their latest video, Psychic Vacuum. See you next week. Gretchen Goes to Nebraska is the name of the next album from King's X. The strange title comes from a friend of the band who came up with the phrase. Drummer Jerry Gaskell wrote a short story based on that title. Now, the story will appear in the liner notes on the album. The band isn't saying too much more because they want people to really wonder about the title. The band will start recording the album next month and hope to have it in stores by spring. Circus of Power are out on the road opening for the Blue Oil. will be performing live on our New Year's Eve Big Bang 89 show. Now, Brett is so proud of the show. One lucky headbanger is going to escape the long, cold winter with Cinderella by flying to Hawaii and basking in the sun. That lucky person is Denise Cook of Merced, California. Now, she's the winner concert, concert. Gypsy Road. <laughs> Only a few weeks before Whitesnake was set to begin recording a new album, guitarist Vivian Campbell and the band of Parted Ways. A statement issued by David Coverdale from his Lake Tahoe home attributed the split to, quote, the usual musical differences and called it a group decision, an unfortunate but amicable parting. Whitesnake's management and publicists refused to elaborate or explain whether Campbell was fired or departed on his own. Now, this wouldn't be the first time Campbell's left a successful band. He left Dio in 85 for the same reasons. Although Campbell didn't play on Whitesnake's last album, he joined the band for the 1987 world tour. Campbell will spend the holidays in his native Ireland, then return to Los Angeles to produce an album for a new band, The River Dogs. Celtic Frost vocalist Tom Gabriel has not only been... Adam Curry here bringing you the metal detector as Queensryche is currently performing their own brand of Reich and Roll out on the road with Speed Demons and Metallica. Fans are sure to witness live renditions of songs from Operation Mind Crime, their latest album, which tells a tale of mind control and revolution. In a lot of ways, the album is as much of a film soundtrack as it is a concept LP. In addition to the lyrics and music, various background voices and sound effects create strong visual images which bring to life the story of Operation Mind Crime. Lead vocalist Jeff Tate told us about the difficulties recording these non-musical elements. He uh, had the scene in mind of, of Dr. X pulling up in a car and in the middle of the street, rolling down the window and telling Nikki to, uh, to kill Mary, his lover. And... Um, so then we had to put it all together, which included using our engineer's car and miking it all up and, 
Our producer, Peter Collins, sitting in the back seat. It's a freezing night in Montreal with snow coming down and everything. And I'm standing outside and carrying on this conversation with him and rec recording the sounds of the window going down. And, you know, it, it turned out nice. Be on the lookout for a Queensryche block next hour. Tomorrow night, Queensryche and Metallica hit the Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina. And don't be surprised if Metallica covers a Misfits song on tour. After all, the Garage Days EP included two Misfits covers. The legendary, legendary hardcore band was founded by Danzig frontman Glenn Danzig. We asked Glenn about the Metallica connection. They were always uh, big fans. I met them a long time ago, and they always wanted to do uh, Green Hell. And they had asked me, and I sent them the lyrics and uh, the music. You know, they're great guys. I knew they'd do a good version of it. I see these are the good things that are happening in rock and roll and heavy metal these days. You know, maybe Danzig should cover a Metallica song. But Glenn also had this to say about being an influence on other bands. Better us than foreigner. Danzig are currently rehearsing songs for their next album, which should be out by summer. Next hour, the metal detector digs up the dirt on Anthrax and Slave Raider. Right now, it's time for four... <laughs> here bringing you the metal detector well the first hard rock and heavy metal seminar ever is being held in universal city california next week aspiring and established musicians will have a chance to network with execs from the record business people like slayer producer rick rubin bassist billy sheen and metal years director penelope spheres will be on head to answer questions and give advice issues will range from women in music metal and teen suicide mainstream metal and the artist's responsibility to the fans there will also be of course performances by a cornucopia of metal bands Thursday night, there'll be a showcase at the Cat House. On Friday, Wrathchild and Femme Fatale will rock the country club. Saturday night, it's Rock's Gang, Warrant, Rock City Angels, Armored Saint, and a surprise group of rockers who are calling themselves the Party Ninjas. The organizers of the whole event are expecting a sellout crowd, so if you want to attend, make, make your plans now. For further information, call Concrete Marketing in New York City at 212-645-1360. That's 212-645-1360. And what will those Californians think up next? Well, the week after the Foundation Forum ends, the fifth annual Thrashathon will be held in San Luis Obispo. On September 28th, pro skaters from all over the country will come to California Polytechnics campus to raise money for the American Cancer Society. The teams will skate for 72 hours straight, and during those three days, DRI, Violence, Attitude, Holy Terror, Dr. No, and No Remorse will all be playing at the benefit. So if you like thrash and skating and you live in California, you know where to be September 27th, 28th, and 29th. For more information, call this number. It's KPGA at 805-773-1895. And next hour, the metal detector gets up close and personal with Brett and Michael. Adam Kirk. Adam Curry bringing you the Metal Detector. Now, Brittany Fox is a band that took its name from a 17th century coat of arms, and they think their catchy name has helped them come a long way in a short time. They had only played together for a year and a half before they were signed by a major label. Brittany Fox says before they had a deal, they had really only played two, in two clubs, but it was their long-distance fans that brought about their success. We had um, a fan base built before we even had a record deal because we had an independent thing that we did on our own mm -hmm. and it got a lot of attention from press and independent record companies and it got into tape trading, underground tape trading and we started getting letters like, from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we had you know, pretty much a, a good base built up prior to the deal and then since the deal we've just you know, built upon that. Yeah, like a year so. before the record deal and everything we were getting mail for like weeks from Japan and so that's what helped us with the record deal with Columbia, too. Well, Brittany Fox is currently on the road with Lita Ford and the next band we focus on, The Metal Detector. You know, in every era of rock and roll, there are bands that sell millions of records, while mi millions of other people despise the fact that the band even exists. In the 80s, Poison is that band. But lead singer Brett Michael says he doesn't really mind people's opposing opinions. You know, our band was voted best and worst band by every magazine. You know what I'm saying? Best new group and worst new group in every single magazine. And it made me feel great because at least I know we're going to be around for a while. When everyone likes you, then no one likes you. If you have as many people hate you as they like you, you can win people over. Well, love them or hate them, here's a block of poison starting off with nothing but a good time. Adam Curry here with The Metal Detector. Now, if you were ever a fan of The Misfits or Sam Hain, you will definitely want to check out the debut album from Danzig. Almost three years in the making, this record features the, the solid vocals of Glenn Danzig and ex-Black Flag drummer Chuck Biscuits. Some may call the record quite satanic, but Danzig says the songs reflect his scholarly study of pagan religions and that his personal beliefs are nobody's business. 
Producer Rick Rubin called the band a heavier 80s version of The Doors, and a lot of others have compared Danzig's vocal style to Ian Asbury of The Cult, as well as Jim Morrison. Although Danzig receives quite a cult following with Sam Hain and The Misfits, he says this is the, the band everyone has been waiting for, even if they don't know it. Another heavy-duty band to look out for is Damien. They're attached to a bit of the underworld, too. The band Damien was conceived by two grave diggers in a cemetery in Ohio. The guitarists in the band couldn't find jobs anywhere else, so they traded their guitars for shovels. They met the other two members of the band in a club after work one night, and they've been Damien ever since. Even though their name might imply a gothic influence, Damien plays traditional metal with just a touch of thrash. Guitarist Chuck Stoll says that after all those hours on the night shift, he hopes this album lets them see daylight. And that's it for the Metal Detector this week. Right now, it's time for a block of German rock from the Scorpion. Once again, thanks to Jim and Michael from Nitro for dropping by. Right now we're back with the Metal Detector as PMRC founder Tipper Gore's favorite band, Suicidal Tendencies, just got off a successful European tour. And the ball caught up with them last week on their home turf in the streets of Venice, California. Lead singer Mike Muir gave us the details of their foreign encounters. The European shows, we open up for Anthrax and then the, the um, English shows like we headlined with M.O.D. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a different thing where you play in front of a, you know, in the auditoriums, we got four or five thousand people, up to ten thousand people at shows, you know. And, you know, there's a lot of people there and they kind of, some of them don't know you and they sit there and they're like, going, wait, what are these people with the scarves on their head and this and that, you know. And then you got the people, yeah, like they said in Sweden, suicidal, they're a real good band, but they wear cleaning lady rags on their head. But, uh, you know, and then you got the people that are into the band and really into it you know and and you know the ones that i you know we make autogram we take picture you know that stuff well before going out on their european tour suicidal added, added a new member to their posse they laugh tomorrow when i can't even smile today it's Adam Curry here bringing you the Metal Detector. Now, rock and roll bands may be here today and gone tomorrow, but one band who survived the vinyl jungle for 16 years is KISS. Smashest, Trashest, and Hits is the name of their new greatest hits album. It's KISS's 22nd album, and it should be out by mid-November. And besides KISS classics, the album includes two new songs called Rock Hard and the first single, Let's Put the X in Sex. Among the other 13 songs is a new version of Beth with Eric Carr on drums. In December, the band will return to the studio to start work on their next record, and Gene Simmons told us it definitely won't be their last. You're going to have to drag me kicking and screaming off that stage. I'm mm -hmm. not going anywhere. You know, there's the old adage, uh, you know, give some new talent a chance. You're going to have to drag me off that stage. I'm going to stay up there because it's fun. It's great. Mm -hmm. Gene has just signed Greg Jafria's new band, House of Lords, to his new label, Simmons Records. He liked the band so much, he signed them only two days after their final lineup was complete. And Je Greg Jafria isn't the only seasoned professional in the band. Chuck Wright from Quiet Riot plays bass and on drums is Ken Mary, who played with Alice Cooper. Now, the band had so much experience in the studio that they recorded the album in just 31 days with Cinderella producer Andy Johns. The tracks include a power ballad called Love Don't Lie and a harder cut called Pleasure Palace. Speaking of the House of Lords, I hear they've been spotted at the RIP party. Let's go to it right now and see what's happening. Hi, I'm Chuck Wright. I'm Greg Jafria from the House, House of Lords. Lords. We're here at the RIP party here in Los Angeles. We're ripping it up. That's right. It's a lot of fun. The convention was great. Our album comes out next week. See you soon. Back to you, Adam. And we'll be looking for that album next week. Thank you very much, Greg. We'll have more from the metal convention and the RIP party coming up, but right now, let's do some wasps. Adam Curry bringing you this week's Metal Detector as a Nevada judge has ordered Judas Priest's record company to turn over the master tape to the band's 1980, 1978 album Stained Class. Now the court wants to check it for alleged subliminal messages. Two sets of parents are claiming that the words, music, and subliminal messages on Stained Class caused their sons to make a suicide pact in 1985. And one of the teenagers shot himself after listening to the record for six hours while he was drinking and smoking marijuana. The other was seriously injured in his suicide attempt. Now this is the first subliminal message case in an American court. It's a difficult case to prove because the plaintiff must show that messages were sent to the brain without the listener realizing it. CBS, however, says there's nothing subliminal on the record and they can't comply with the court's request anyway because they cannot find the master tape. Now, this kind of litigation was a topic at the recent Foundations Forum in Los Angeles. Don Dockin was one of the many musicians who spoke out. The point is, it's like, it doesn't matter if you're in a metal band or a rock band or a glam band, if they want to find fault and they want to say you're a satanic, they're going to find it, man. It doesn't matter what your band's called. And when I get these fly flyers at home, I got them framed to say that shit. So, I, it's just they want to find a goat. Everybody's trying to find fault in somebody else because it makes them feel like they're a little more righteous. That's all. 
Next hour, the metal detector talks to nuclear assault and uncovers the dirt on 10 new bands. Right now, till a guns with Electric Gypsy. Now they're gearing up for a Midwest and West Coast club tour. First video from their album, The Real Thing, is for the song from out of nowhere. It turns out the band paid for the shoot in more than just time and money, but also in blood and broken bones. Uh, we started off and uh, we were doing a couple of takes. And uh, Mike P here uh, broke a, a cap, you know, on his front tooth. The mic. With the microphone, first thing that happened. And then Billy, uh, while we were filming, he threw his back out, so the guy was real stiff. He calls me up on the phone later and he goes, hey Jim, I took some pills, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but all was not okay on the video shoot. It turns out there was more pain and a little more surgery involved. At the end of the set, uh, Mike Patton here fell on a uh, broken bottle and cut uh, some flexor tendons, and uh, it was actually pretty bad. When I saw it, I, thought, I said, ah, it's just a little cut. And I found out a couple days later that he'd been in the hospital all this time. Uh, uh, five and a half hours of uh, microscopic surgery. Pretty, uh, pretty grim. Yeah. I but uh, he's healing up, and uh, he's coming along nicely. While the band is healing up, there have been rumors about them getting a chance to open on Metallica's tour. Metallica, of course, have been seen sporting Faith No More t-shirts in the past, so it seems possible that they would hand over some opening gigs to their hometown buddies. After putting in their time in the studio recording their debut album, Mr. Big is primed and ready to hit the road. While a lot of bands are motivated by fame, fortune, and, of course, women, Mr. Big was based on something else. The band was really built for live. We really decided early on that the whole purpose of this thing was to get out on the road and play forever. We'll make a record so we have a reason to go out there, you know, and the whole thing points towards playing live. So we can't, we can't wait to get out there and just, if it's in front of 50 people or 50,000, either way, you know, we'll, we'll have fun either way. Yeah, we like, we like records and, and, and interviews and everything, but you can't scream at the top of your lungs. Well, we could, but we don't know when I'll hold on. Mr. Big will be announcing their tour plans soon. Whoever they tour with, it's sure to be a really big Your basic deal. rock and roll, you know, that you see, even though half the a great band. They just need a little more guts in the traveling department. Metal yeah. Detector, Creator, the German band, faster than the speed of light, are back on the metal map with their fourth album, Extreme Aggression. The title reflects the band's trademark of thunder and lightning speed music and aggressive lyrics, which deal with disillusions in the world. Songs include the title track, Extreme Aggression. Some pain will last about the damage we've done to our environment. No reason to exist, love or hate us, don't trust, and the first video, Betrayer, which will debut next week on The Ball. Another new release comes from the streets of New York. York City and the hard sounds of sick of it all. They're a heavy hard to the call. Oh, this. Ricky Rackman back with the metal detector. If you like thrashing, slamming, or moshing, here's some news for you. German band Creator are coming to America at the ending of this week. Opening up for them are fellow Europeans Corner. Here's a look at the first batch of dates. <laughs> Grim Reaper and guitarist Nige Rocket, who told us that Steve hooked up with the band in late in the game, after most of the recording of the new album was already completed. The first time we ever played with the, Steve had ever played with the band was after we'd recorded after vocals on the album. We'd never actually played with him before. He'd been in the band like two months before he'd actually sort of sung with the rest of us. So it was quite strange, really. It worked really well. It just clicked together. Things just, just falling into place. Onslaught new release is called In Search of Sanity, and titles include such sensitive songs as Asylum, Shell Shock, Lightning War, Blood Upon the Ice, Welcome to Dying. And the next video on the ball, it's one by them, and it's a cover of the ACDC classic, Let There Be Rock. played 10 shows in the Soviet Union at the Lenin Sports Complex in Leningrad. And they're the first major hard rock band to play in the Soviet Union. Each night they played to over 15,000 enthusiastic fans. The Russian headbangers came from as far as Moscow and Siberia to see the show. The new Scorpions record has just been released. It's called Savage Amusement and it's already one of the best-selling hard rock albums in the country. 
And would you be surprised to hear that David Lee Roth will play at a Monsters of Rock show? Well, he will be, but it won't be one of the shows on Van Halen's tour, as Diamond Dave will be joining Iron Maiden and Kiss at England's Monsters of Rock Festival on August 20th. The Castle of Donington Monsters of Rock Festival is a British heavy metal tradition, and every year some of the top names in the hard rock business get together for the all-day extravaganza. David Lee first played the festival in 1984 when he was still with Van Halen. We'll have more from the Metal Detector next hour and more with the boys. Rock love! Hello. Loudest, fastest, most influential punk rock bands around. And of course, drummer Marky Ramone left the band a while ago and was replaced by Clem Burke, formerly of Blondie. But now Marky is back, just in time to celebrate the band's 15th anniversary. Now, there, there will be a double Greatest Hits album coming out at the end of the month. They'll also be touring the United States, Europe, and Japan. A lead singer, Joey Ramone, recently got a head start on the 15th anniversary celebration with a party at the Ritz in New York City. Hi kids, it's Joey Ramone here, the famous Ramones. And you're here at my first annual Glitter Acid Rock and Roll Trash Ball and Extravaganza. Joey threw a big party at the Ritz in New York recently to recreate not only the golden days of punk, but of classic 60s garage rock, which so heavily influenced the 70s punk scene. Joey's guests included veteran scene makers and all his favorite bands, from the Chesterfield Kings out of Rochester, New York, to the Waldos, led by ex-heartbreaker Walter Lure, to Manhattan's own Raging Slab. <laughs> One of the evening's many highlights was provided by Deborah Harry and Chris Stein, who joined Joey for a pounding rendition of the Ramones' I Wanna Be Sedated. Cycle Sluts from Hell, or the, quote, Slut Beauty Contest. Hasn't the world been missing this sort of stuff? You mean like the Cycle Sluts from Hell? Sorely. Joey capped the musical proceedings with a thundering version of the old Chambers Brothers nugget, Time Has Come Today. Yeah, and at least one international interloper judged the first annual Glitter Acid Rock and Roll Trash Ball and Extravaganza a totally terrific success. Rock and Roll is definitely alive and kicking. Oh man, I should have him coordinate my next birthday party. Well, of course, we'll have more of tonight's headbanging host, Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden, uh, in just a bit. But right now, we've got something new from a band that's from... Boy. Well, the trial for a $1.3 million lawsuit against Motley Crue began this week in Athens, Alabama, and the crew's Nikki Six took the stand. The crew was sued by two teenagers who got a little more than they bargained for when the Theater of Pain tour stopped in Huntsville, Alabama back in 1985. At the concert, 19-year-old David Wright suffered a split lip and 17-year-old Robert Miller was blinded in his right eye. Both teenagers claimed to have been struck by pyrotechnic explosives propelled from the stage. The Motley Crue's defense contends that the effects occurred behind the band and could not possibly have reached the audience. But the whole incident hasn't deterred Motley Crue fans as they lined up outside the courtroom to get a chance to see the trial and, hopefully, Nikki Six. But earlier this week, the trial was declared a mistrial and they'll go through the whole process again in just about three weeks. Van Halen has asked their attorneys to file a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts for banning the upcoming Monsters of Rock show. The band will be seeking actual and punitive damages for violation of their First Amendment rights. On May 5th, the board of selectmen of Foxborough voted against the Monsters of Rock appearing at Sullivan Stadium, which is the major concert venue in the Boston area. A band concerts and public problems aren't new to the stadium, as artists like Bruce Springsteen and Michael Jackson have been voted down in the past. Last weekend, 125 people were arrested at two Pink Floyd shows. The town of Foxborough says they voted down Monsters of Rock for reasons of public safety, high noise levels, and production arrangements. But Van Halen issued a statement saying that they regret the implication that hard rock fans are more prone to disruptive behavior than fans of other musical groups. Well, next hour, the Metal Detector talks tonight at the Atlantic Records 40th anniversary concert with Jason Bonham playing drums. A Zeppelin brought the audience to a fever pitch and ended the night with their epic Stairway to Heaven. Backstage, Robert Plant spoke about the Zeppelin mystique. You see, Zeppelin is anything that is powerful yeah. and imaginative and creative. And uh, were it to be an entity as it was way back, then 
it would have either stopped through lack of interest yeah. or it would have continued to, to create again and again and again because that's what it did, yeah. you know. I mean, that's what, what it always did. It always made something new out of something, or at least it stole delicately, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but is, I mean, is there any possibility the band would ever get together? I mean, it, seems, it just doesn't seem right, you know. No, I don't think there's any, any need for that, really. Robert Plant's first home video cassette will be released on June 7th, and it's a compilation of five music videos called Mumbo Jumbo. And the videos are linked uh, together by outtakes from the Heaven Knows and the Tall Cool One clips. Jimmy Page's solo album Outrider will be out in mid-June, and Plant sings on a couple of the songs. The first single and video will be Wasting My Time, and the inside word is that Jason Bonham, son of John Bonham, will be playing drums on Page's tour. Our next Anthrax. But their original engineer, Dave Goodman, is putting out a new Sex Pistols album called We Have Come For Your Children. It features previously unreleased songs like Revolution in the Classroom and Here We Go Again. And the record also has alternate takes of such classics as Anarchy in the UK, God Save the Queen, and one one live track from the Pistols' final concert. The album is available from this address. Also available is a brand new Sex Pistols video featuring previously un... ...told us about one of his more memorable Grateful Dead road trips. I, I took a car. I was from Reno. We, we went from Reno to Denver. And... We were in a 62 Rambler drinking warm lucky beer and living off these guys' food stamps so that you go in and buy a piece of fruit, get the change to buy gas. All right. Then we got, we got to the dead show in Denver and then everybody was panhandling and it's like, and I didn't really know how to do any of that or whatever and couldn't get myself to do it. But, well, but, I, was, but I could steal. <laughs> so while everybody was enjoying the dead show, I found a bread factory next door to the place and stole a, a garbage bag full of bread. So all these deadheads come out of the Denver concert with fireworks and stuff on acid, and I'm passing out bread. And they're calling me, <laughs> this is true, they're calling me Jesus, right? Because I'm breaking bread and handing bread and stuff. And all these guys are on acid, and there's fireworks everywhere that they're lighting off. It was, it was pretty interesting. On uh, Monday, Guns N' Roses will start. Adam Curry bringing you the last metal detector for this. And it was, it was kind of like, uh, I felt like I, I was on speed or something. It was like, I thought, oh man, you know, no big deal, I can handle it. 40,000 people, no problem. I got up to the top of the stairs, and I look out there, and, uh, you know, my knees got weak. I was, I was scared. I was scared. But once we started playing, it was cool. Yeah, wait until he steps into the curry copter, then he'll really be scared. A Kingdom Come, Van Halen, and the other monsters of rock will be in Tampa, Florida. There's a look. It seemed a little weird kicking off the Monsters tour in a bucolic Wisconsin hillside, but for metal fans it couldn't have been a better setting, and more than 40,000 of them showed up, some driving for more than six hours to make the scene. The Monsters' opening show drew comparisons to great concert events of the past. When I was 10 years old, I saw Woodstock, and I said, that's what I want to do someday, so now I'm getting my chance. Well, I figure it's the biggest thing since uh, Woodstock. <laughs> we played for more people today than we did the whole time on our UK tour, which was like 20 days. It's the greatest concert in the world. Nine hours is great. The size of the event fueled the energy backstage, which ranged from opening night nerves to unabashed excitement. I look at that audience, and now I'm, I'm a nervous wreck. I'm shook up. I gotta go to the bathroom. It's like you people out there. Can you imagine being on the stage with 40,000 people out there screaming? Man, it's over the top. I like these kind of gigs where these kind of gigs where the crowds are like above you, looking down on you. It's great when you have eye contact with a lot of people out there, and um, I kind of like this. The Scorpions played a 90-minute set, storming through old scorchers as well as new cuts from their current top 10 album, Savage Amusement. Metallica and Dokken also brought the crowd to its feet, and then it was time for Van Halen. <laughs> With Alex thumping rhythm, Michael Anthony pounding away, and Sammy and Eddie lifting the audience to a new high, the first show ended a major success. But it was only a taste of things to come on this roof-raising tour. This first show here is very small. This is our drum riser barely fit on this stage. That's the truth. Because all we're using from our real show is our drum riser and about a third of the lights. So the next stage you'll see is three times as big. 
Unfortunately, Sammy Hagar slipped on stage during Van Halen's first song and found out after the show that he had fractured his tailbone and the vertebrae above it. Luckily, the mishap wasn't serious enough to prevent Sammy from performing, and none of the dates have had to be postponed. There's more good news for the Monsters. After some controversy and legal threats, the tour is going to hit the Boston area after all. We're back that caused him to put the band's tour on hold in mid-April. And after completing a tour of Japan on June 22nd, White Snake will return to the U.S. to perform rescheduled concerts. And here are the first few dates. The tour will continue through August and we of course will keep you posted. Now Def Leppard is another band that have had a setback in their career after drummer Rick Allen's car crash in 1986. Most people expected the band to break up but Joe Elliott and Rick Savage said they had no trouble keeping faith in the band. In fact, on the road I got a couple of guys from Megadeth who are going to be stopping by. We're going to see what they can do with these t-shirts. The, the music establishment, but a few weeks ago, the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences announced the creation of a new Grammy Award category, Best Heavy Metal Recording. Now, there are those who are worried that the more accepted sort of pop metal is going to get most of the nominations instead of the uh, bone crunching kind of rock, and Van Halen, Sammy Hagar thinks the whole idea of awards is unnecessary. I don't think they should categorize things. I just think that when they say rock album, it should be a rock album because there's other... I think they should have moved the more middle-of-the-road stuff out of the rock category, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of bands that I particularly like, but they're not really rock, what I call a rock band. Okay, we're a rock band. You two's a rock band. You know, those are rock bands, all right? And they're different. But, so, I don't know, if we, went, if we won Best Heavy Metal album or something like that, I, I'd still go like this and I'd say, why? The first Grammy for heavy metal is going to be given out next year. In the next Metal Detector, Jimmy Page releases his first solo album and the Green Bay Momstein's Rising. This chart has compiled the Heart Attack since their debut album back in 83. With a new album, South of Heaven, Slayer pushed the boundaries of thrash metal, and the most noticeable difference is the trend towards slower songs. A South of Heaven includes songs about Vietnam, terrorism, and child abuse, and as always, the lyrics are pretty graphic. The band covers Judas Priest's dissident aggressor and plays faster than ever on Silent Scream and Ghosts of War. We have Vinnie Vincent and Mark Slayer who will be back with you in just a few minutes. Right now, though, it's Fraley's Comet and Insane. Four. And uh, we'll be doing the theme song. One, two out of the number two spot on Billboard's album charts. They're the first band since Led Zeppelin to even crack the top ten without releasing a single. But the band is already getting set to make another record. Axel filled us in on that. Well, we have an EP out called Live Like a Suicide. And it's a four-song EP, but what we're going to be doing now is releasing another EP called GNR Lies and putting the two together, four on one side, four on the other. Yeah, the subtitle is The Sex, the Drugs, the Violence, the Shocking Truth, just because we really like that title. Well, their new album should be out by October, and fans in Irving, Texas can see Guns N' Roses play with a motley crew of bands, including In Excess and Ziggy Marley. They'll be performing together at an outdoor festival on September 17th. And did you ever wonder what would happen if you crossed Guns N' Roses and Zodiac Mind Warp with a little bit of Jim Morrison thrown in? Well, it would probably sound like Circus of Power, which is a band getting ready to release their debut album on RCA Records. They performed at the New Music Seminar in New York last week, and here's a taste of them. She's ripping out that freedom. Yeah, I love that. Their music is very aggressive and the lyrics are not for the timid. In fact, Iggy Pop wrote a song too radical for his own album, so he gave it to Circus of, of Power to record. Dan kept talking about stuff. Iggy heard the stuff and said, yeah, there's some stuff that I could um, give them that I can't use in my record. You can dig that. Because uh, his record company was giving him a hard time about some of his lyrics. And <laughs> like our turn. Give us a hard time about any of our lyrics. So we said sure, and it was an honor because that he's one of uh, my favorite singers and my favorite writers. Vinny Vincent and Mangers Ball tonight, and we are on. Album. But Ian Asprey and Billy Duffy want the new album to be a return to the psychedelic sound of their debut album, Love. Asprey and Duffy enlisted their original bassist, uh, Jamie Stewart, for the new record, but they still haven't announced the name of their new drummer. Now, The Cult is recording in Los Angeles with producer Bob Rock, who has worked with Bon Jovi, White Snake, and Kingdom Come, and the record should be out early next year. 
Back in the cult's homeland, England's 8th Castle Dinington Festival kicks off September 20th. Uh, in the past, bands like ACDC, Whitesnake, and even ZZ Top have headlined the original Monsters of Rock Festival. This year, Iron Maiden is headlining the whole gig, but most of the other bands are American. Kiss, David Lee Roth, Megadeth, and Guns N' Roses are all playing, even though Guns N' Roses have the number one album on Billboard charts, and they're in the midst of a tour with rock heavyweight Aerosmith. Playing the castle is yet another milestone for the band. That's something we've always dreamed about, so hope it goes over well. Yeah, I'm real excited about it, yeah. It's one gig in the middle of the tour that we have to fly out. We've got three days, you know, basically set out to take a Concorde from upstate New York, yeah. fly out to England, do the show, fly back, and get back on the tour. I'm just hoping that the presence on the Concorde are real nice. <laughs> I hear you get a little kit. Um, <laughs> Adam Curry bringing you the metal detector as Robert Plant has just finished his non-stop go tour. It marked the first time Robert performed Led Zeppelin songs in a solo concert. And now Robert's cohort, Jimmy Page, is getting set to kick off his first solo tour for the album Outrider. Uh, will Jimmy follow in Robert's footsteps and bring back some Zep? We asked him for a preview. On the tour, I'm going to be playing, um, well, music that goes right... Oh, well, I guess with the sort of trademarks, guitar-wise, of... Uh, and uh, milestones as such that I've um, pioneered. I'll be putting those into the set. So in fact, it'll go right back to the Yardbirds really and all the way through, uh, you know, past, present and beyond really. There'll be even, you know, more material from the, from like uh, the future or whatever, which will then be past, but <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I'll be doing some stuff from Zeppelin, I guess. Well, Paige's band will include John Miles on vocals and John Bonham's son, Jason, on drums. We asked Paige if playing with Jason was anything like playing with Bonzo. I don't think anything would be like having his dad there, <laughs> you know, there's no way. But uh, he's, he's, you know, he's certainly a, a, a good drummer, is Jason. And he's, you know, he's, he's getting better all the time. Well, the tour kicks off at the end of this month, so get ready for Paige's guitar wizardry. And here are the first few dates for that tour. King Diamond, we come to the top of the last hour. Fred. Electric Lady, 20 times. Studio. This is a famous studio. Jimi Hendrix built it with his own. And Eddie Kramer. Oh, Eddie Kramer. Let's have a good Eddie. We're all going right. to do our new album and mix it here. We're going to probably going to do it. We're going to order out a lot of food for me here. Yeah. A lot of food. Pizza place. Right, John Z. It's a Chinese food store. 24.